Joe, you served during Don't Ask, Don't Tell. If you could, take us back to that time and, and, and just share with us some of the challenges that you personally faced. Um, yeah, I guess when I enlisted, I was 18 years old, had just finished college. I wasn't fully aware of my own sexuality, so it wasn't until I got I got out of my enlistment to go into an ROTC program and went to college and was put into a, an atmosphere where I was free to explore myself and my identity. And it was then that I that I started uh, that I began to I got to know myself better and came out of the closet while I was in that uh, ROTC program. The the thought of going back into the military after because they don't just send you to ROTC and let you go you you give four years back uh, as an officer um, it, it was it was daunting for me at the time and uh, and the whole time that I was in those four years between 2002 and 2006 I, I, I served in fear especially on board the ship um, I was careful uh, but it, it I lived out in my personal life I was stationed in Japan for um, two two of those years so for that time, it was it was relatively easy to just to stay in the closet in at work. But when I got when I got stationed here in San Diego, I met the person who is now my husband. Um, it was not easy to keep it a secret, but I wasn't going to live in the closet outside of work life, and it it caused I think unnecessary stress in my life. And I and I'm I was so glad to see it overturned. That's one of the main reasons I got out of the military. Um, and uh, I hope that that queer service men and women are, are serving I, I i hope their experience is better than mine yeah. Yeah. does anyone else have anything they want to add to I that think, i think you're very brave for having done that but i also think that leaders have known that our sailors are are or are not mm -hmm. and it doesn't really matter for most of us there are it's like in life there are people who hate people just because they hate people. If you allow a person to do their job, nine times out of 10, they're gonna do their job to the best of their ability. And I think that's where great leaders come from, to be able to take those people, mold them and bring them in no matter what's happening, so. I wanted to hop in on what you said, that you hope that new service members are living a better experience. We are. So oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> we are. It's definitely where, for any of the service members that I've at least met, like. Whoever they are, they're true, they're doing their mission, but I'm thankful that they're able to be true to themselves too. That's great to hear, and, yeah. Yeah, we're <laughs> living our best life, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What things do you think the military can do to alleviate the mental health crisis among both active duty personnel and veterans right now? I think everybody can kind of agree this is, this is a big and main topic that a lot of people focus on right now. So when I joined the Navy, 30 plus years ago, uh, it was taboo to talk about mental health. Uh, it was a sign of weakness, it would sideline your career, and even if it really wouldn't, there was a stigma that it would. Uh, today, it's, uh, it's okay to say you're struggling, it's okay to say you're having problems, but now we don't have enough mental health professionals. Mm. Uh, so I would say we need to incentivize programs to get college kids into the, the mental health professions. Uh, the, the government and everybody that puts out different grants needs to target this because it's not just a military thing, although the military struggle is a little bit different. Uh, it's huge. Uh, there's other programs that are coming online. My Navy Coaching, uh, Navy Leadership and Ethics Command is working on coaching and partner with them. We're trying to look to, does it also fit like at our fleet and family support centers? Uh, coaching doesn't replace the therapist, but it's the small cascading pieces that add up that, that people just can't figure out how to, how to handle or, or, or work through is a better word. So as they build and build and build, now there's too many. Now it becomes a mental health challenge to where there's a lot of good evidence out there right now that having that coach to help that person work through and solve it themselves is extremely gratifying. So I would dump a ton of money into coaching and just give both the sailors, the service members, their families that asset and help be preventative before it turns into a stronger mental health piece. Having somebody to talk to the lower level, I think would be phenomenal. I think that there's been an incredible amount of work over the last decade or so to be able to say you're struggling in the military and receive the care. But I do also think there's an incredible amount of work to still do. One of the things I believe is being handled is the continuum of care. When you have service members who have now stepped up and said, I need support, I'm not feeling well, 
um, with my mental health, the idea that you get out of the service and then you have to go navigate the mental health industry in the field to find the next person to care for you is maybe where we can do better. And I think that comes with bills being passed to take the DOD and the VA to work together so that that continuum of care does not lapse. We see that in the nonprofit that I'm with where they're looking to not have that lapse because they're afraid of going backwards when they've had so much support. So I think it's worth acknowledging that People are listening and things have been done over the last decade and a half or two. And maybe sometimes it feels slow and, and it moves and then it feels slow, but we are making progress. But I think the continuum of care is gonna be a game changer for our transitioning service members to not feel the burden of losing care in between while they're navigating all the other things when it comes to transitioning out of the military. Yeah, bottom line, we owe it to our men and women who swore an oath to protect and defend. And it's time, I think, Congress step up to say we owe these people for their service and to step up in ways that they haven't done yet. So um, that's my two cents, because I know when I got out, it was basically they kicked you out of the airplane, mm -hmm. you're done. And, and that's why I see a lot of the Vietnam vets that I know um, when they had the parade down here honoring them, there were tears in their eyes because that's what happened to them. They got kicked out. Uh, there was no goodbye, no transition, nothing. So we owe our men and women who wear the cloth. We owe them that uh, to help them when they're done. And I think going on top of that too, if you get injured, what do you do? You sit out, you could have busted up ankle. We've sit you on the sidelines for a little while. Mm -hmm. So what? You're still not in the fight. So if I have a brain bruise, why can't I sit out for a while? But it's all this, like Mashik said, it's a stigma of, oh, you're a... Perception. Well, yeah. if you're injured, you're injured. Huh? Yeah. I don't care what type of injury it is. So... If I can add one last thing yeah. from the family perspective, mm -hmm. we're sending service members home. We need to continue that care because now that spouse or that family Our care that's care. there are trying to navigate something they have no familiarity with. And so I think one of the things that the military could recognize and the VA could recognize is the need to kind of support who the caregiver is going to be, especially if a service member is coming home with a significant disability that needs that wraparound support because that education is not exactly there. They were not the ones who served. So, but they're the ones who are feeling that mental health challenge and not really understanding how to navigate it. Very good point. Thank you, Ashley. These are all incredibly important issues facing our military veterans today. We want to thank all of you for being with us and for your time. And thank you for joining us.